Welcome uh, everybody to CrunchFit. We are in the middle of February already, thank goodness. Uh, we're close to getting lighter evenings, thank God. Um, so, um, and obviously hopefully even closer with the vaccines to doing something in the park at some point during the summer, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Welcome, welcome nonetheless. It's a very different session tonight. Um, I, I, as the email suggested, I'll split it into two halves completely. First session, about 20 minutes or so, going to be all about balance, flexibility and stability really I suppose for want of a better phrase. A bit lower intensity, it's not going to get your heart rate up at all, it's going to challenge your body in slightly different ways but nonetheless, nonetheless uh, very important ways. Um, certainly as we progress in years then balance becomes particularly uh, important. Um, and uh, some of the exercises you'll do today are great for helping with coordination, balance, and general uh, awareness of your, of, of your body. Um, and the second half, uh, 20 minutes uh, in the second half, will be a higher intensity session. Um, about eight exercises, pretty much back to back, which we'll do a couple of times, um, but a couple of times only. So we can afford to give it some leather uh, when we get to those, um, and, and, and do about 40 seconds of each exercise twice. So um, we won't do the usual warm-up even, we'll do some slightly different warm-up stuff today because I want to get the body warmed up in a slightly different way. Um, so um, we're going to do a bit more dynamic stretching um, rather than static, so rather than touching toes and holding that kind of thing, we're going to be doing some more dynamic movement type uh, based uh, warming up rather than jogging because we don't need to get the heart rate up quite so much. Right, so without further ado let's get into the warm-up phase of the first session. Um, so we're going to start with the, the top half first and then kind of work our way down. So let's open those arms out, let's get the pecs and shoulders nicely opened out, better get that core, keep it all nicely pulled in, shoulders nice and square. Okay, good stuff, let's put a shoulder swing in, nice. Strong stance with the feet, one foot forward, one foot back. Really try and get a powerful swing with the arms, forward and backwards. Change stance, put the other foot forward. And again, keep nice and tall. Okay, good stuff. Arm circles. Really need to get the shoulders warmed up. Sorry, Jacob, this is uh, not helping your Slightly wounded shoulder. And Sorry, go right. on. Might be helping it as well, getting some blood flow back in there, helping with recovery, of course. Okay, good stuff. So we're going to have feet about shoulder width apart. We're going to be reaching up side to side. Making quite deliberate movements rather than rushed. Good old trunk twists. Try and keep those hips facing as far forward as you can. So we come down from the shoulders and pecs to the core or the midsection. Okay, let's just do some knees to elbows. Nice gentle stuff. Bit of a little twist and crunch with the core as you bring the knee and elbow together. Okay, good. You've got your chair handy, grab your chair. So we're going to get the hips, hips area warmed up a little bit now. We've done these before actually a few weeks ago, so just face your chair, gentle touch on the, on the chair, and we're going to swing our legs out. Sideways to start off with. Try not to lean forward too much, try and stay as upright as you can while using the chair for support. Couple more. And then we're going to change leg. Try and avoid any body sway if you can. It's literally working from the hips. 
abductors doing most of the work here, by the way. A couple more. And the abductors are on the outside of the leg, makes the leg swing out. Adductors make the leg swing in. So most of that would be working the adductors. So stand side onto your chair now. And we're gonna be just doing kicks forward and back. Again, without leaning forward or backwards to any great degree. Two more. Okay, change leg. Good stuff. Okay, good. Get rid of your chair for a moment. Just gonna do a bit of a static one. Nice little ski sit. Just hold for a few seconds. Okay, relax. So, that's about as much warming up as we need to do for the first phase of today. It's gonna to be about 20 minutes or so doing some lower intensity, lower impact, um, balance and flexibility work, okay? I'll try and talk you through it as much as, uh, as much as possible. And we're gonna repeat the exercises that we're gonna do a couple of times, okay? We'll go through all of them, then we'll repeat them again, all right? So, we want you to get, first of all, into a downward dog position. So those of you who do yoga will know exactly what I mean. So you're gonna be on your hands, and your toes, and then you're gonna dive your head down in between your shoulders to try and push your chest as far back towards your knees as you possibly can. You're gonna hold that for a little while. Then we're gonna come forward into like a plank position, down into a low plank hold, just for a few seconds. We're gonna come back up into that kind of press up position and we're going to bring one knee forward. Nice forward lunge. Try and get your hand, sorry, your foot as close to your supporting hand as you possibly can. And just stay there for a second. Really trying to get a good stretch inside the adductors, across the glutes. Now, if you can, just raise that rear knee. Get a bit more of a stretch across the hips. Knee back down, push the foot back, back into that press up position, downward dog. Okay, we're gonna repeat that one again, but using bring the other leg forward, so into the back into the press up position, low hold, so chest about an inch off the floor. Back up onto your hands and toes. Bring that knee forward. Again, try and get your foot as close to that hand as you possibly can. Real good lunging stride. Once you're into that low position, again, lift that knee if you can behind, just to get a bit of extra stretch. Okay, bring the foot back. Back into that plank position and downward dog. Really try and force those the head between the shoulders, really high with the hips. Okay, good stuff. Nice. So just relax that one off for a moment. Next, we're going to do some plank on again on our hands but we're going to be doing some taps shoulder wise and some walking plank. I'll, I'll talk you through it in a moment. Now, each time you lift your hand off the floor to tap your shoulder, your pelvis is going to want to drop. So your challenge here for all of these is to keep the pelvis as level as you possibly can. Almost like there's no movement at all. All you're literally doing is lifting your hand off. I'll show you what I mean. So give yourself a reasonably wide stance to help yourself out. And as soon as you want to lift your hand, the hip wants to, wants to drop. Um, so you just got to try and work 
as much as you can to avoid the hips swinging and swaying and dropping too much. Okay, we're going to do 10 taps, one on each, uh, five on each shoulder. We're going to then, then, then transfer to walking plank. So walking down, walking back up, alternate which hand you start with. And again, as you change heart, arms, try and keep the pel pelvis as level as you can. I'll be ready. Okay, 10 shoulder taps first then. Give yourself that reasonably wide stance. Obviously, the narrower you have your feet, the harder it's going to be. So, depending how strong you're feeling. Okay, five taps each shoulder then. Two, two, three, three, four. Really try and focus on staying as still as you possibly can. And five. Okay, so walking plank then. We're gonna do ten of these as well. Okay, off we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nine and ten. Good. Relax. Nice. Hopefully, you found that as you were getting further into the set, the core has been challenged that little bit more. Trying to keep really still is a bit more difficult. Okay. So, a bit of a theme here. We're going to do a bit of half Superman. So, we're still going to be on our hands and toes. Again, with a reasonably wide base, because what you're going to be doing is coming out into that half Superman position, holding it, then we're going to be tilting sideways just to unsettle ourselves a little bit, and then back. Okay, we're going to do each side obviously. Are we ready? So, nice wide stance. Shoulders above your hands, half Superman, doesn't matter which side you do. And then tilt the arm and leg out to the side, back to the center, and down. Good. Find a nice strong position again, other side. Nice and long first. And hand and leg out to the side, back to the center, and down. Good. How do you find that? Okay, it takes a lot of control to do that really, really well without lots of rocking and rolling, lots of shakes all over the place. Okay, good. So, next one we're going to do. Called the banana or hollow body. <clears throat> so the doors going again. Sorry about that folks, conspiracy tonight. Okay, hollow body or banana. So it's a static exercise. So make yourself nice and long in the body. And you're basically gonna bring your feet off the floor 
and your chest and hold in that position there. We're going to hold for around about 30 seconds. Are we ready? And go. Again, try and keep the core nice and tight, pull that waistband in as much as possible. Try and keep the shoulders off the floor. Ten seconds left. Good stuff. And relax. Well done. Good stuff. Now then, next one. So up to now we've done hit the shoulders a little bit. Certainly hit the pecs on the low hold. A lot of, a lot of core activity. This one's going to be hitting the glutes and the hamstrings uh, quite significantly. We've done it before actually, a, a, a bridge walkout. So you're going to get into that bridge position, nice and high with the hips. Then you're going to walk out a couple of steps, hold those hips as high as you can, back again, a couple of steps. Find that nice position and we're going to do that three times, okay? Height with the hips is the most important thing because obviously as you go low, your hips are going to want to drop and it's going to put a lot of pressure on the hamstrings. So you've got to work really hard. Are we ready? Okay, so let's get into that bridge position first, nice and high with the hips. Then walk out number one, two steps. Try and keep the hips high before you come back. Okay, back to the starting position, that's one. And walk out again. Good, hips high. Keep adjusting the hips, keep them as high as you possibly can. Two steps back. Okay, good. One more to go. Walk out then. Again, hips high. And walk back. Hold for a second or two. And relax. Well done. Good stuff. Nice. Now, we're going to stay with the glutes. We're going to be on all fours this time around. Now, we're going to do a combination of two exercises together here. So, you're going to start with your leg out behind you, okay? Nice and straight as you possibly can. Toes pointing down towards the ground all the time. And we're going to do leg raise, knee drive to hydrant. Back there, leg raise, knee drive to hydrant. Okay, five on each side. Now. Try and make sure you keep the tension on the glutes the whole time. That's what we're really trying to work here. As you drive the knee forward, obviously the tension is going to come off a little bit. But as you drive that knee sideways to do the hydrant, then that's when you need to try and get the, the, uh, the medial glutes really firing as well. Okay, so five on each side then. So leg outstretched, outstretched, start off with toes pointing down. So point out. Heel up in the air first, drive the knee forward, followed by that hydrant, get your hips as high as you possibly can, back to the center, drive out, leg raise, and knee forward into hydrant, really squeeze the glute at the top of the movement, that's two. It's number three, keep the waist nicely pulled in, knee forward into hydrant, that's number three. Okay, leg straight, leg raised, forward, hydrant. Okay, one more on this side. Leg raise nice and straight, knee forward, and into hydrant, really squeeze the glute at the top, hold for a second or two, back to the center, and the other leg. Leg out straight, high as you can, knee forward and out to the side, back to the center, and off we go, number two, here we go. Knee forward, out to the side. Hold for a second or two, back. Leg straight, drive it high with that heel. Knee forward, this is number three, hydrant. Really squeeze the glute, back. Leg straight, raise it. Knee forward and hydrant.
hydrants, number four. One more after this. Good. Leg straight. Raise it up. Knee forward and out to the side. Okay, good stuff. Nice, hopefully you really felt the glutes doing most of the work with that one. Okay, next one is a balance exercise. One that I find a little bit tricky if I'm really honest with you. Um, so, <laughs> imagine I'm doing it perfectly. I'll try and demonstrate it really, really well. Um, so it's a straight leg deadlift but on a single leg. Okay, so what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be putting all your weight on one leg, keeping this all pulled in nice and tight, and then you're gonna be tilting forward and making your rear leg come out to the side, or out behind you rather, as much as possible. Balance, and then back up to the top. And we'll do three of those on each leg. If you wanna make it slightly more tricky, hands above the head, as you come into the into the T, it unbundles you a little bit more because your weight's all distributed in the wrong places. But if you want to challenge yourself that a little bit more, then that's the one to do. Okay, so ultimately, what you should be trying to get yourself into that kind of position. It should be like a T when you've uh, when you've got your legs and your your hands in front of you. Are we ready? So choose which side you're going to do. We're going to do three on each side. Are we ready? And go. And try and make sure the leg comes out directly behind you as much as possible, rather than across the centre line if you can possibly help it. Okay, and back to the top nice and slowly. Probably find that supporting leg and down, he's wobbling all over the shot, mine certainly is. Great for the ankles, great for the hamstrings and glutes, this one. Try and get that rear leg as high as you possibly can, so it's in that kind of T shape. Back to the top, one more on this leg. Should be starting to feel the hamstring a little bit by now. Really work to get that ham, that uh, rear leg behind you and out straight as much as you can. And back to the top. Okay, good, really felt that one. Other side then. And keep that core nicely pulled in. Off we go, try and find that, that balance point. Okay, back to the top. And try and work that leg out straight behind you as much as possible. Try and get that glute working to get the, hand, to get the foot really high, as high as you feel you can. Back to the top, last one on this side then. It's very much a concentration and balance movement, this one. Great exercise to do on a regular basis. And back to the top, great. Well done. Hopefully you felt it, certainly top of the glutes and hamstrings doing a lot of the work there. And if you pulled your core in tight enough, a little bit of work there going on as well. Okay, and what you might find as well with an exercise like that, is you've got one side and one leg is wobblier than the other. So again, that tells you that that might be a, the leg to do a bit more work on generally. Okay, so we're gonna do a, we did it in the warm up actually, ski sit. So we're just gonna do a 30 second ski sit. Bear with. Are we ready? So, heels planted, feet about shoulder width apart. We're just going to come down to that nice low ski sit position. Hold on to it. Heels planted. Stick the bottom backwards, keep your back nice and straight. Hopefully, your knees are following the line of your toes. 10 seconds to go. And relax. Good. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Okay. 
And the last one we're going to do of the more static or balanced variety, and you might want your chair actually for this, is calf raises. Now if you're going to do if you're going to do double leg, you probably won't need your chair. Have it there just in just in case. Make sure your toes are nice and forward. Core pulled in. It's going to be going up onto those toes. Try to hold top of the calf raise as best you can without wobbling just for a few seconds, then back down. And we can do five of those. Or if you want to challenge yourself a bit more, single leg. So have your chair nice and handy. Either way, try and get yourself as high up onto your calves, onto your toes as you possibly can. Really trying to get the, the big gastronemius muscles working as much as possible throughout the movement. You could always do a few double leg or single leg and then revert to double, entirely up to you, or you can do the whole leg double or the whole thing double leg if you wish. So we're going to do five of those each leg or 10 if you're going to do double leg, okay? I'm going to choose to do single leg. So up we go then. If you're holding onto the chair, try and make it a fingertip hold. Back down, straight back up. Top of the movement as much as you can. Really get those calf muscles working. Back down and then straight back up. This is number three. And back down. And number four. Come on. Really good work for the ankles, this one. If you're doing single leg. And back down. And back up to the top. Number five. And down. Change leg if you're doing single leg. Up to the top then. And down on the control. Back up to the top. And down. And back up again. This is number eight. Back down. Two more then. Up we go again, right up to the top. Come on, really work that calf or calves. Back down under control and back up again. Last one. And under control. Good stuff. Nice. So that's your uh, perhaps lower intense, lower intensity segment done. Sorry, I had to dash out a couple of times to get the door there. Um, so have a quick drink. Um, and we'll run through what we're going to do for the, uh, there's about, about 20 minutes left in terms of the uh, higher intensity slots that we're going to do. Now Jake, the first exercise you definitely shouldn't be doing if your shoulder's hurting you. Um, so instead, I'd like you to do crunches. So you don't, you don't use your upper body at all, okay? So what I mean by that is, Literally, knees bent, elbows to knees, try and make sure you've got some daylight between your chin and your chest, okay? That's just for Jake, because he's got a, a wonky shoulder. Everybody else, the first one is going to be pike press-ups. So you're kind of getting into that downward dog position and doing press-ups really from there. Just demonstrate what I mean. So nice and high with the hips on your toes, head between your shoulders effectively, and you're coming down into that pike, press up from there, okay? Let's do 40 seconds of that. Are we ready? Two, one, and go. So make sure it's good quality and under control. Make sure you don't drop yourself onto your head. Jake, no swinging of the arm on crunches, just keep your hands by your head, get the abs doing all the work, that's halfway. couple of abdominal exercises now, um, or core related. So I want you to imagine you've got like a medicine ball or something like that in front of you here, and you're gonna be doing some leg lift overs. 
So both legs together, feet together. You can use your hands for stability. Try and keep the ribs nice and upright. And it's all, gonna be all about lower abs, this one. Ready? Go. Try and get good height with the toes. Well done, good stuff. Halfway. So when I say good height, try and get your toes in line with your eyes if you can. Nearly there. Relax, well done. Okay, so that's working lower abs and certainly the hip flexors. So we're going to be laying on our front, doing a similar sort of movement. You won't be able to lift your legs as high, but I want you to imagine you've got kind of a, as maybe a smaller obstacle by your feet and you're trying to lift your feet over the obstacle. See what I mean? Keep looking down at the floor. So you're bringing your legs up and over, side to side, as much as possible, okay? Don't overarch your back though, okay? Keep it under control. Make sure it's a controlled leg lift. Are we ready? Go. So it's not about doing hundreds and hundreds of reps. It's about doing lots of quality ones. This is about working the glutes, lower back muscles, probably top of the hamstrings as well. Halfway, good stuff. You challenge yourself to lift those feet as high as you can without overarching the spine. And relax, good. Now, next one's gonna be a side leg lift. So we've done front leg, leg raise, rear leg raise. Now we're gonna do the side. So, going in this position, and we're gonna do one side for the whole time actually, because we're doing two rounds of this, so we're gonna do the other side next time. Now, we're gonna try and keep your feet together, legs straight and together. And you're gonna come up into a side leg raise, but also crunch position here. So you're really working with the, the obliques and the serrators here to get a good crunch, trying to meet hand, oops, without falling over, hand and feet over there, okay? Quite a challenging exercise. If that becomes too much, we just revert to a standard leg raise like this, okay? But try and do as many as you can, reaching up for those toes. Are we ready? It's all gonna be on the same side, remember, ready? Go. Again, it's about control. Get that core pulled in. Legs as straight as you can. Just remember which side you're doing for the next round. Halfway. Good. Five seconds. You there, come on. And relax. Good. Oh, nice one, that one. Really feel that pinching on the sides there. Okay, so. As you've probably noticed, those first four are all about upper body, possibly a bit of glutes. The next four are going to be about power and getting your heart rate up a little bit, okay? So the first one is either going to be standard lunge, okay, nice powerful lunge, keeping that body nice and upright, or power lunge in terms of jump in between. 40 seconds. Are we ready? 
Up to you which one you do. Ready? Go. You can always start doing the power lunge and then revert if you wish. Halfway. And relax. Good. That's a lung muster. Okay. Now then, you're going to need a chair for this one. He says trying to compose himself. Okay. This one is about concentration, power, but it's also about control because it's going to be a single leg squat but from sitting on the chair. Now the trick here is to have your heel relatively close to the seat of the chair. Try not to lean forward too much. Keep looking forward and up as much as possible. And you're going to be standing up and then controlling down. See, I'm really trying to control the descent. That's where the power part comes in. Because what's happening is you're getting the quads to work really hard, but they're actually lengthening as you, as you go down. So they're having to work even harder. Okay, so 20 seconds each leg. Are we ready? Go. Try and control body sway as much as possible. Don't spend too long sitting on the chair. As soon as you sat down, back up again. Change leg. Remember it's the control down, it's important. And relax. Good. Now, if you find that one quite hard, <coughs> or you start to get a bit tired, then what you can do is do a, a double leg and then a single leg down. So you can actually build up to doing the single leg up and down. Okay, next one. On your back on your feet. So it's a good morning, but with a slight difference. We normally do good mornings, hands in the air, lean over that bar like this. We're going to do exactly that, but with a split stance. Okay, so you're going to be straight legs coming forward up to the top, forward up to the top. And try, if you can, keeping your legs or feet facing forward. And we're going to change stance halfway through. All it's going to do is put a bit more pressure on certain parts of, of each leg. Okay, are we ready? 40 seconds and go. And control it down, drive it up. As you drive it up, you should really feel the hamstring on the glute on the leg that's forward. Change legs. We try and lean over and forward over that bar, imaginary bar. The hand relax, good. And the last one, jumping jacks. A nice high with the arms. Are we ready? 40 seconds 
and go. Stuff, everyone. <clears throat> it's a nice little challenge for the body going from controlled, lower pace to lower intensity movements to a bit more dynamic. It really gets the system thinking about adjusting between energy systems, keeps the body on its toes. Good. So we'll do one more of each of those. So eight exercises left, starting with good old pike press-ups and the Jacob's crunches. Try and keep the uh, technique, the execution of technique, 100% as much as you can. I'll be ready. 40 seconds again then, pike press-ups. Ready, and go. Keep the quality nice and high then people. Don't crash down on that head. Keep it controlled. Halfway. shoulders, come on. Relax, good stuff. Get those mats ready. So it's seated, leg lift over. Try and get some good height with those toes, remember. Ready, <coughs> go. Good. On our fronts then. So leg lift over, laying on our front. <clears throat> then we keep looking down at the floor, keep the neck nice and neutral. Ready. And go. Try and get as good as much clearance of your legs off the ground as you can. Seconds. Relax, well done. Okay, side leg lift. Other side this time. Ready? And go. Up 
play. Come on, keep it going. And relax, good. We're on back on your feet. So lunges, either power or normal lunges. Ready, and go. Sinks each leg. Ready. Go. Change leg. Jumping jacks. Ready. And go. Hopefully our heart rate's climbed a little bit. Good. Really nice bit session that. Nice little body shock. But quite a lot still. Core and all the areas around the core. 
because the core really is here down to about here so all these power muscles all still count as core right then just do a couple of stretches just to cool ourselves down a little bit and then we're done Ooh, okay so let's just roll that chin down our chest make ourselves nice and relax let gravity take hold of our upper body Relax the breathing a bit. I know the heart rate's still up there, but try and control it as much as you can. Okay, let's move our hands around to one side, one ankle. Back around the front, back around to the other side. Back to the front. Okay, bend your knees slightly and roll yourself back to the top. Good. Very good. So laying on our mats then. Quad stretch. Certainly those uh, lunges and squats would have hit the quads very nicely indeed. So hips forward. Pull that ankle right. Start back as you can. Side. Okay, you release sitting up then, soles of your feet together. Pull those heels right into your pelvis and exercise some pressure on those knees, chest nice and high. Keep looking forward. Now you're nice and warm, don't be afraid of applying quite a bit of pressure to those knees. The muscles are nicely loose and stretched by now, so they're ready for it. These static stretches are the ones you should never do before you start a session. Only ever do them afterwards when the muscles are nice and loose. Plenty of blood flow. Okay, release that off, give it a shake. Okay, back on our feet then. Good old trunk twists. Just get our spine loosened off. Good. Stay nice and square then. One hand behind the back and tilt to the side. Keep the core nicely pulled in. And the other side. Sort of shoulder nice and high. So, stuff. Last one then. Just some big shoulder rotations. Just to loosen off those delts. And the other way. And that, my lovely CrunchFit people, is that. Well done, thank you for coming out.